Good evening, everyone. I hope you are all hearing me. At this time, we're going to pray before we begin our song service and our worship this evening. Let us pray. Kind, loving, sweet, compassionate Father, we praise and we glorify your name, Lord, because you are worthy to be praised. Forgive us of our sins, cleanse us from our unrighteousness, dear Lord. And as we come to worship, I pray that our worship, Lord, will be acceptable unto thee. I pray that, Lord, as we sing to your glory and to your honor, that our souls will be watered and, Lord, hearts will be touched and, Lord, we will be drawn closer to thee. Bless us, members and visitors alike. And I pray, Lord, that you will hasten those who will be joining us so that, Lord, they can receive a wonderful blessing this evening. This is my prayer with thanksgiving. In Jesus' precious name, amen. At this time, we'll go with our first hymn of praise, hymn number one. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. We go after two, one, two. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. O oh, my soul, praise him, for he is thy help and salvation. Holy who hear, now to his temple go near, join in glad adoration. Praise to the Lord who are all things so wondrously reigned. She led the honor his wings, yea, so gently sustained. Has thou not seen how the deserts of been? Granted in what he ordained. Praise to the Lord who doth prosper thy work and defend thee. Surely his goodness and mercy here daily attend thee. Ponder on you. What the Almighty can do if with his love he be friendly. Marvelous grace of our loving Lord. Grace that exceeds our sin and our guilt. Hymn number 109. Marvelous grace. We go after two. One, two. Marvelous grace of our loving Lord, grace that exceeds our sin and our guilt. Yonder and come, mount our poor, there where the blood of the Lamb was spilled. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that is greater than all our sin. Sin and despair like the sea wave cold, threaten the soul with infinite loss. Grace that is greater, yes, grace untold, point to the refuge, the mighty cross. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that is greater than all our sin. Marvelous, infinite, matchless grace, freely bestowed on all who believe. You that are longing to see his face, will you this moment his grace receive? 
grace, grace, God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse within, grace, grace, God's grace, grace that is greater than all our sin. We go with hymn number 34. Song of Joy and Gladness. After two, one, two. With the song of joy and gladness, either bring your noblest list, banish every thought of sadness, or report your highest praise. Sing to him whose care has brought us once again with friends to meet, and whose loving voice has taught us of the way to Jesus' feet. With a song, with a song, the song of joy and gladness. With a song, with a song, the song of jubilee. Joyfully with songs and banners, we will greet the festal day. Shout aloud our glad hosanna and a grateful homage pay. We will chant our Savior's glory while our thoughts we raise above, telling still the all our story. Precious be redeeming love with the song, with the song, the song of joy and gladness, with the song, with the song, the song of jubilee. Thanks to thee, O Holy Father, for the mercies of the year. May chart as here we gather, so we grant it to sincere. Thanks to thee, O loving Savior, for redemption through thy blood. Bring upon us, holy spirit, sweetly draw us near to God. With a song, with a song, the song of joy and gladness. With a song, with a song, the song of jubilee. Amen. Thank you for your lovely singing. Even though I wasn't hearing you, thank you. At this time, we were having Sister Hoyle and daughters. daughters who will be giving us a welcome and our opening song. Good evening, everyone. We want to welcome you all to another night of our education week. We are happy that you're here with us and we pray that tonight you will receive the blessing that you come in store of. Thank you for coming and please do come again. Our opening hymn is hymn 653, Lead Them My God to Be. Hymn 653. Lead them my God to Thee. Lead them to thee, for your givest me. Let's go again. Lead them, my God, to thee. Lead them to thee. These children, there of mine, thou givest me. Oh, by thy love divine, lead them, my God, to thee. Lead them, my God, to thee. Lead them to thee. 
looks bright and fair, festive and gay. Let no delusive snare lure them astray. But from temptation's power, lead them, my God, to thee. Lead them, my God, to thee. Lead them to thee. And for such little ones, Christ came a child. And in this world of sin, lived on defiled. Oh, for his sake I pray, lead them, my God, to thee. Lead them, my God, to thee. Lead them to thee. My faith be dim, I would believe that thou this precious gift will now receive. Oh, take their young hearts now, lead them, my God, to thee. Lead them, my God, to thee, lead them to thee. Good night, everyone. The scripture reading is taken from Matthew 19, verse 13 to 16. And I will read in your hearing. Then were there brought unto, the, unto him little children, that he should put his hands on them and pray. And he, the disciples rebuked them. But Jesus said, Suffer the little children, and forbid them not to come unto me, for such is the kingdom of heaven. And he laid his hands on them and departed thence. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Amen. You're muted, Ella Goodlet. You're muted. Thank you very much, Uncle Mark. <laughs> Thank you very much. So at this time, we'll be having our intercessory prayer. I do not see any prayer requests coming up in the chat. So at this time, we will be having a prayer chorus, and those who have requests can put them in, and we will be praying for them. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face and the things of earth will go strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Let us go after two. One, two. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face and the things We'll go straight in the light of his glory and grace. One more time as we assume the position for prayer. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will go strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. 
higher than the highest human thoughts can reach, is God's ideal for his children. Godliness, godliness, godlikeness is the goal that is to be reached. And so, Father, we come into your presence, the master teacher, whose first lesson book was nature, showing off your handiwork, the colors, thinking of everything so that you can you only have to create it once. And all the laws that govern it are created, unlike man who has to be correcting and correcting the things that they have made until they are made perfect. This is a God who we serve, who can think of everything from beginning to end. What a marvelous God. And to think that you, O oh Lord, all powerful and all knowing, take such an interest in the life of us, mere mortal, sinful clay. Father, you are the one who has made dirt valuable. Because this lump of clay, because of our own doing and our own sins, caused the life of Jesus Christ to redeem us. Therefore, we are twice as valuable, once by creation and another by redemption. And so humbly we come before you this evening, asking you to forgive us and to cleanse us because you have been trying to teach us on the day of our birth until now to point us to who you are and what your plan is for our life. But Lord, we have like sheep gone astray, turning to our own way, doing our own thing, but still through the working of your Holy Spirit, you want to draw us back into your fold because you want us to have a happy and fulfilled life. And that is not possible outside of thee. And so the Holy Spirit is here because you say when he comes, he will guide us into all truth. Teach us what we need to do in order to be saved. And so dear Lord, we humble ourselves under your mighty hands. And we pray that as we go through tonight's service, something would have been said that will inspire us into a closer walk with thee. I want to pray, O oh Lord, especially for our students in schools, secular schools, that you will keep them focused. Help them, O oh Lord, to stand fast and stand for the faith that they believe. I pray, O oh Lord, that wherever they are, they will understand that they are ambassadors for thee and what is required in order to lead men and women into the saving knowledge of thee, and that you have placed them there for a purpose. I pray. O oh Lord, for other students in also Adventist school, it's not much more different, O oh Lord, the temptation and the trials that they go through. But, O oh Father, in this there is to be an atmosphere where they can sense your presence. I pray for the teachers who teach in any institution that they will understand that their first work is to mold minds for eternity. I pray, O oh Father, that they will see their work seriously and do it assiduously and also be deliberate in their actions so that as these students learn academic, they will also learn spiritual lessons that will prepare them not only for service in this life, but for the higher joy and wider service in the life that is to come. I pray, O oh Lord, for individuals here who may be going through rough and turbulent times. Someone may be sick for them. I pray that you'll provide healing, strengthen that individual, that they may continue to lift up your name no matter what the outcome is. I pray, O oh Lord, that you will provide the finances for those who are in need of such, who may have rent outstanding, who may have food, outstanding, food bills that they need to pay, doctor bills, who may have school fees outstanding. Lord, provide it for them, I pray, and help them not to forget from whence their blessings come. 
I pray also for those who are grieving and mourning that you provide comfort. And I pray, oh Lord, especially for, for those who are losing it spiritually, who are thinking of departing from the faith. I pray that they will understand that when they leave you, where will they go? Because you have the word and you have life. So, oh Lord, I pray whatsoever our problems, fix it for us, we pray. And when thou, when thou comest, may we have a place in your eternal kingdom. Be with all heads that are about here, all families represented. And tonight, as your servant presents, may our hearts truly burn within us as we say thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Adventist Church was in its infancy with a membership that was only in the tens of thousands and yet it had already made ventures into the publishing work and the health work. Despite a small membership, it would soon move into the educational field as well with a vision far greater than the reality of church life at the time. A school had started in 1868 by Goodloe Harper Bell that was supported locally here in Battle Creek. But in 1872, James and Ellen White would call for the upgrading of this school into an advanced educational institution and also for the denomination to support the school. As guidance for the school, Ellen White wrote, testimony for the church number 22 where she developed the fundamental principle of the correlation between the physical mental moral and religious aspects of education the bible was not to be just an elective option to study but was to be infused throughout the whole curriculum eliminating the classics as the main thrust Initially, the teachers and administrators struggled to implement what they probably didn't fully understand themselves. As well as making the curriculum Bible-based, there was also the admonition to include a manual labor program. Education was to move away from the Latin and Greek classics and be holistic, focusing on character development and daily reminding the students of their obligation to God to live for Him and be a missionary wherever they were. The focus on manual labor and missionary work is reflected in the early names of these schools. The College of Medical Evangelists, Emmanuel Missionary College, Southern Missionary College, Australasian Missionary College, and Oakwood Industrial School. The purpose was for mission. The name of the school reflected the purpose of the church to train missionaries at home and abroad. The vision to start a comprehensive educational system would mushroom and grow. Education is such a key evangelistic strategy. The places today where the church is stronger have a strong Adventist educational system that is valued and supported by the members. Education that recognizes it's not just for academic advancement, but that is also evangelistic and redemptive, echoing the words of Ellen White that education and redemption are one. The work of education now encompasses the globe with the largest Protestant school system, but our strength lies not in our size, but in our faithfulness to the original purpose of setting up the educational school system. Practical education with a clear mission focus was the primary motivating factor rather than just academic excellence. 
Many today do not have the opportunity of an Adventist education. If that is you, then may you be a witness in your school or university like the Waldensians in years gone by. Proverbs says, train up a child in the way he shall go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Whether it's at Sabbath school, home school, or Adventist school, we see that education is vitally important in solidifying what we believe as well as giving us the skills that we need in life. If you live near a school, then support it. Support the youth who are attending, whether it's financially, through your prayers, by volunteering, by working, or in whatever way that you can. At this time, we will be having some testimonies from some of our teachers who are teaching in secular schools. So we will start off with brother and sister Curtis. At this time, we will have some testimonies. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Hello. Are you hearing me? Amen. Amen. I just want to give God thanks for the opportunity to share um, how he has been uh, using me in the um, secular or government um, educational system one that is not Adventist in principle and philosophy. And so as an Adventist in a public school, I would, uh, in many of my class times, would have the students uh, pray, especially when we're going, they're going for lunch. I, I would have the students um, pray when they are going home, if it's the last session for the day. And also, if when, when I'm a form teacher, I would use the opportunity to share the Bible with the students. And I give God thanks for the, the privilege and the honor um, of sharing Jesus with my students. I must admit that some days in class, um, the students would start um, conversations and, and uh, ask Bible questions. And so, in many of those instances, we sometimes had, had to pause the lesson to, to discuss those topics because one of the things, um, especially now at an all boys school, I am now teaching at Kingston College. Um, I believe the young men, they, they have questions and many times they don't have persons that they, could, they can actually um, discuss these questions with. And so um, in there are instances where we have very vibrant discussions in class. And I'm truly honored this evening to have two of my students who will also testify to, to our encounters in class. Um, and so firstly, I'm gonna ask um, Chevron Smith to share after which um, I have Alvin Nugent who will share. So I'm just gonna turn over now to um, Chevron and Alvin. Um, both young men from Kingston College. Uh, Chevron, you may go ahead now. Proceed. Okay, good evening, everyone. Am I audible? Yes, yes. All right, so uh, thank you very much, sir, for, you know, uh, inviting me. And once more, everyone, a good evening, and I hope you're all well, right? And I'm just really here to share my journey and my experience um, knowing Mr. Curtis, uh, it started approximately two or so years ago. Um, he 
was my teacher of information technology at KC. Uh, at first, I had some troubles and songs, lots of things happened in my life personally. And then one day, Sir and I just sat down and, you know, we talked about some things. And then we, well, I rather made some commitments and so on. And then Sir aided me along the way. And through that, we started to build a pretty good teacher-student relationship and so on. He became an individual I could, you know, confide in and share my thoughts and so on with. And by virtue of that, I got the, you know, the opportunity to learn some more about, about the Christian faith. Now, to first establish something, I definitely am a Christian. However, I'm not a Seventh-day Adventist. Uh, I'm a Sunday worshiper. But um, Mr. Curtis has been, you know, informing me a lot about things that I wasn't um, previously made aware of. Um, you know, my worshiping on a Sunday stems from my background, as my parents um, uh, grew me within that lifestyle and so on. And then I reached a point where I started to have, you know, questions and I couldn't necessarily get answers as easily as, you know, I would have expected to. And therefore, I went to serve as an open Adventist and so on. I asked questions and, you know, through the conversations we have as Sir said during classes, um, sometimes outside of classes and um, so on, and when I'm helping him marking papers, or sometimes, you know, we're just on the school compound or so, because Sir is just like an individual who's so approachable and he's always um, optimistic, he's always eager, and he's always ready to, you know, share um, his word and so on uh, about God and it's just really really phenomenal but uh, one thing in particular that really stands out is a discussion we had you know sometime back before the, the pandemic and online school became a thing uh, well more prominently we you know talked about God and basically some misconceptions that are out there that to some extent had affected me and my Christian journey. Uh, through that conversation, I've learned a great deal of things that I just wasn't exposed to any at all. Uh, personally, you know, in trying to find answers to these queries, I tried on my own to read the Bible or to, you know, find YouTube videos. I use the internet and so on, those resources. And I oftentimes got so confused by the overwhelming amount of information, um, some that are, you know, contradicting and all. And through the discussions with Sir and the way he's able to break down things, and he is a, he's a man of scripture. So for everything that he states and so on, he always has his sources to back it up. And that's something that I absolutely admire. And um, through that conversation about God and, you know, the timeline from all the way back to when Jesus walks the earth to all the way, um, you know, now today, uh, he's elaborated on all that. And then ever since that, he elaborated on all that, sorry. And ever since that discussion, uh, I've definitely uh, realized that Sir is truly a man of faith in the way he lives uh, his life, conducts himself, reacts situations and so on. And I definitely am happy, right, that I do have someone like that in my life. And while I'm not an Adventist, uh, currently, that is, because I'm still trying to figure things out. And, you know, with me as student and so on, it's a bit challenging to balance everything. It's really been a great, um, you know, experience having to, you know, go to Sir whenever I need something, um, you know, elaborated on or explained right and i'm grateful for all of that and i really do believe that, that sums up the journey for now there's a lot more that i could elaborate on because trust me when we answer a talk it's some hours we spend going over things but uh and, you know to respect the time and so i wouldn't necessarily go into all the things that we've discussed and all but it's just really a remarkable thing, right, Sir's um, Christian journey and how he's able to aid others, including myself, who really are interested, but at times can just be overwhelmed with all that's taking place, all the distractions and so on. So that's really my journey thus far. It's an ongoing process, but I'm just grateful for what I've learned and I'm grateful once more for having Sir in my life to continue to enlighten me and all the you know, issues and so that I may have on this Christian journey. 
All right. So thank you, uh, sir, for inviting me. And thank you, everyone, for listening. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Welcome, sir. I'm Vin. All right. Good evening, everyone. So I'm here to testify, right? Mr. Curtis invited me to talk about, like, how he incorporates Christianity into his daily teaching and his daily life. So I met Mr. Curtis. Well, I actually met him in a mid-year exam. Or it was end of year in grade nine. I don't remember. That was the first time I met him, but he actually started teaching me in grade 10. So the thing with Mr. Curtis is I've met a lot of Christians, right? And most most of the times, all they will do is once in a while, or if their class is before lunchtime, we will just pray, and that's it. But Mr. Curtis, like, he makes Christianity or the Bible very interesting. Like, a lot of the times, I would have questions, and instead of going to the internet, I'll go to Mr. Curtis because like these questions are kind of specific. And if I go to the internet, they won't be answering it due to it being specific. And I would only like find the answers on forums and so. And with Mr. Curtis, like he always uses his Bible as a reference. And when he tells me stuff, he usually says, like, do all listen to him, go in the Bible and read it for myself every single time. I ask him something, he always tells me that to go in the Bible and read it and look for myself as well and try and understand it. So personally, I'm talking about God and Mr. Curtis as he makes the Bible very understanding because of all the metaphors and so in the Bible, sometimes I don't really understand it as much. And Mr. Curtis breaks it down and makes it very simple for me. I'm a Christian but I'm not that religious, right? But Mr. Curtis has explained a lot to me. And I could say that he's affected, positively affected my relationship with God. But at the same time, I'm really not that religious. So it's not like... My, my relationship with God is great, but it's been better since talking to Mr. Curtis has mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. more because of the things that Mr. Curtis has said to us in class. Like sometimes we'll have class. I usually have Mr. Curtis class as an extra lesson. So after class we would have all the time to talk and sometimes he would even bring up YouTube videos explaining stuff and so and so showing us YouTube videos talking about things and explaining things to us that we would understand. It's like learning. I've been to many, many churches and go Sunday school and all they do is make us color a book with Jesus or the Good Samaritan and all of that. And we're going to church from 10, way to 2 o'clock and all we're doing is singing, singing, singing. And pastor just talking, talking, talking and I can't understand anything. But when Mr. Curtis... He takes his time and explain and makes it very fun and comprehensible. So I'd like to thank him for that. And that's it. I'd also like to thank you all for listening. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, uh, Chevron. And thank you very, very much also, Alvin. Um, these are just two of my students. And I give God thanks for the opportunity to to be used in these um, settings, because I do believe that, you know, Jesus is coming very soon. And, you know, I could also mention the fact that um, we have Rahim McDonald, who has become a member of the church, and we are to continue to work and pray for them. We have um, Justin, um, and I, I am asking, and these are young men from Kingston College who have joined the church. And I'm asking us to pray for them as we go forward. I am praying for them. And let us, let us allow the Lord to continue to use us in our various spheres. God bless you and thank you very much. All right, so I was asked to share how I witness on a secular campus about Christ. Um, I think the first thing is 
it makes it easier if you're around a group of persons that share a similar mindset. And so I was fortunate enough to be a part of a group, Adventist group on campus, called Advent Fellowship. And that was how we were encouraged and motivated and given the tools because um, we are studying. It's not predominantly Christian in Trinidad. It's Muslims, Hindus, and Christians are about the same ratio, like one to one to one. So it's very, um, not just multicultural, but multi-religion as, as well you could say our multi-religious our society so one of the ways was to find common ground um, be there to listen to any challenges persons may have also suggest that I can pray for them as well not overly pushy with my faith um, usually if there's something being held on a Friday, they probably won't see me. Or they'll say, hey, are you coming? I'm like, no, man. I'm a Adventist, da, 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 da. And so out of that comes a series of questions. So I think the most important thing is not to hide being a seven Adventist. And naturally, what would occur from that if you are, you know, living up to the faith and conviction that you have, um, questions will naturally follow also, if you're not as strong, being in an environment where it's secular will kind of let you know where you stand. You either get stronger or you get weaker. So I would say the most important thing is to align yourself with individuals that are like-minded. And um, you can get encouraged from that and be trained and so forth. Yeah. So for me, it's been a good experience because I was able to be open about my faith and just living the life, questions would follow, and I'd be able to share, or just to support any of it all. Yeah, so that's how I was able to share. Good evening, everyone. Um, I would like to thank God for being with me through the you know, city and my, my opportunity that I have in a secular school, which is a basic school, where I can share with the children that I come in contact daily, you know, before the COVID. And it, it was a privilege for me to, to share with these five year old, the love of Jesus, because um, most of them, you know, that they don't go to church. So we will talk, I will talk with them about, you know, create the creation story. And I see they get very interesting. Or sometimes we'll talk even about the commandments because, you know, we have a one to one and I break it down for them to understand the commandments and to and to know that even the Sabbath day. And I remember one little boy went home and said, is 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 staring that yeah, we must go to church on a Sabbath, you know? And I felt good that at least it is reaching home to parents what God has been doing for them. And even the things of nature, when we go outside to to, to play or, or we, we go outside in the morning to look at the sun. So We'll find the things of nature to talk about and how God is faithful. And I'm so happy that I can share with these little ones and they can relate to their parents. Even, even with the teachers, when we used to have devotion, I know that they will, they will ask me to do devotion. And at the end of the devotion, they will say, no, it is, this is different. Because I will, sometimes I don't even remember that it's not Sabbath school. I just bring across a, a story. In which when they do devotion, they will sing two songs and, you know, say prayers and they finish. But sometimes I'll just bring across a story and, or, you know, for instance, I might bring in Daniel and I might sing the song, you know, about Daniel or, or sing the song about David and they will enjoy this, you know, these songs. So I'm so happy that as a seven day Adventist, I am standing for, for principle, I'm standing for the truth and I, I, I want my life 
to shine so that others can come and see Jesus. That is my few words. Amen. Well, unlike the two previous persons, I work in an international school, and an international school is one that caters to the international community. So we do not follow the curriculum that's locally given. And on screen, that's a picture of the institution that I work at. Um, we don't do per, whether morning devotion or lunch or snack or dismissal. That's just not a part of the curriculum. However, being an Adventist in this institution, I think the verse that comes from Matthew 28, that says, verse 19, that says, go ye therefore into all the world and teach all nations and teach baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. In my institution, that's where that's the melting pot. That's the world. People from students from different religion, cultural. It's a diverse and dynamic um, school environment. It is resourceful and a lovely place to be. So, how do I share Jesus with my children? I observe. That's one thing. My observations are intentional and they are purposeful, and I pray. So, whenever they ask questions they will say like on a Monday morning we'll ask how you spent your weekend and they will talk about it and I'm expected to tell them about my weekend and like I always say on Saturday I went to church and I'll tell them what happened during playground time they will ask you always at church every Saturday and that's a wedge now for me to tell them another thing that I do is that I look for students across the elementary so it's not just in my grade. So elementary goes from kindergarten up to fifth grade. And I will have conversation with them and also give them text that they can commit to memory. And after they commit it to memory, we'll have a discussion about the text. And the beautiful thing about these children, they know our campus. We are not allowed to talk about God. We are not allowed to share our faith. So whenever they come to me, they were like, oh, Miss Curtis, can you go to the playground? And I'm like, sure, I will sit around there, just the two of us or the three of us, depending on how many students are interested. And we'll discuss and we'll give them object lessons on the text and they'll take it home and share with the family. And parents now would come on campus. That's when they were allowed to come on campus. And they will come to me specifically and ask me to pray for their children or pray for their child. And that I'll do. For my coworkers now, um, what I do, I buy gifts. So like little books, nice little books I'll purchase for them. And then I'll wrap it and give it to them on their birthday or just uh, any special occasion that they're having in their life. If they just bought a house, if they have a child, whatever it is, I'll give them these things so they can read. And then I'll just pray that the Lord will continue to open their minds to him in the leading of the Holy Spirit. So that is what I do. And there's one little girl, she is so interested in Bible text that she has now committed to memory about 13 texts. And I am just giving God thanks. And I keep saying to her that in life, when you're making decisions, just remember these texts, just remember them. And I pray that the Lord will put people in our path as she go along, that he will continue to help her to establish a relationship with him and also the others. So that's my testimony. Thank you. Good night, uh, everyone. Um, all right, so uh, before I share exactly how I share, um, I'd love just with others. Um, whether students or you know, co-workers, I want to highlight something that um, one of uh, Elder Curtis's students mentioned, and it's tied to what um, Angie mentioned as well, that you know a lot of, or most probably, um, Christian teachers, well, just Christians in general, uh, whether they're teachers or whatever their profession is, you know, um, 
if you wonder if they, if they love Jesus. I mean, most people don't work in an environment like Angie. They almost never hear them talk about Jesus, you know, uh, no matter how, how uh, the situation presents itself. And I'm not talking about shy people, you know. So as Angie says, you know, um, Matthew 28 and all these things, you know, we should um, always be intentional, you know, always be intentional and try to look out for opportunities to share. Not everyone might be like me or Elder Curtis. We just love chat and we'll eat up anybody here that puts it too close. Um, but, you know, we should always uh, try to be intentional. Um, so for me, a uh, couple of things. You know, students, our kids really are really inquisitive. You know, um, like Angie said, they might say, oh, was your weekend? I just ask you a billion random stuff. You know, uh, other campaign students used to love say, say you're married? And you just all kind of personal stuff. And you know, whenever it's the question is, or right, depending on the question, if it's appropriate, I might answer. And most of the time, um, I can, you know, uh, slip in something, um, something to do with Christ. Um, quite often, something to do with Sabbath. They might say, for example, even now with this whole COVID teaching thing, and you know, probably can I expect a lot of extra class needed for, um, you know, especially for the uh, exam, um, the exam level students, and some of them might say, "Sir, can I have class on the weekend, like on a Saturday?" And we just, and we just look on them. And someone will say, Our sir. And then somebody else will jump up and say, Una eat that, sir, Adventist, the class can't keep on Saturday. And we say, All right, thanks, you know, <laughs> and things like that. Um, as well as, again, just, you know, most kids these days just watch on the media and, well, whether YouTube or TV or whatever it is, uh, the media in general. Lone, utter rubbish. And so they might come. I remember the first time my son say, um, actually, Christopher, Christopher Tufton's son used to see me and say, yo, yo, bro, God, what go on? And for the first three or four times, I never really paid on my mind, just, just bounce off him face, think him just let words out of him out. But Maria said, him can't hear Satan. You know, I, and, and me, I hear yeah, other students with it. So I say, where did I get this from, you know? And they would and tell me and just, you know, just all kind of silly things. And so whenever they, they would mention all the silly things that they do um, and do some things like six and just all kind of money so they get from the dance and music and wherever they get it from. I know someone and use that opportunity to give some kind of counsel, have some kind of conversation, um, you know, uh, even, you know, and just, and then um, I'd always try to, you know, give some counsel in terms of, okay, guys, you need to get proper sleep. Um, you need to stop eating all the junk that you eat, or at least eat significantly less. And then that would give me an opportunity to mention a health message, you know, um, and such things. And even a time or two, I uh, brought lunch and even shared with some students that, you know, that um, um, would say, sir, so why you eat? And, you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of people have it to say, if, if you're a vegetarian, all you eat is grass. Um, so that's always interesting. And speaking of sharing lunch, you know, so I have, I have a number of coworkers um, that I used to share lunch with uh, quite often, um, and you know, just you know, would just always talk about all the benefits of the health message and whatever. And I'd show them in the Bible that you know, if you if you know we we are um, we are Christians, you know, we are soldiers in a war, and you know, as a soldier, you need to be fit, mental, mentally, physically, and all the other others. I'm sure them all in Genesis one, God's ideal diet was, you know, fruits, not vegetable grain. Well, not so much the vegetables, but that's another conversation. And then when we get to heaven, it's the same thing again. It was like, what you take from that, you know? Um, and then maybe finally, I'd say, I usually try to incorporate in my lessons where applicable. So, you know, often as teachers, we use analogies, you know? And so whenever I can think of a really fitting analogy that I, that, you know, can come from the Bible, I'd usually try to do that. And that would sometimes spark a further conversation. And most recently, um, most recently, I teach a math class up at um, the pre-university pre school on UA campus. And so um, for the past two weeks, actually, since we've had the campaign, I've been having um, 
some Bible studies with the uh, uh, with a number of my students on Fridays, Friday evenings, um, with some it is written lessons, which is going well. I hope it continues. And uh, yeah, I think that pretty much sums up how I share with those around me at school, especially. <laughs> thank you so very much teachers thank you for sharing um what you do for christ while on the the field as i've heard everywhere we go because we've been commissioned to go we've been commissioned to go and no matter where you are we ought to go i will just i'm asking you please to bow your heads with me as we pray. Loving God, we give thee thanks and praise for tonight, and we thank thee so very much for thy goodness and grace. Forgive us of all our sins. Use me, I pray, as was prayed for, and help that we'll gain something, and what we gain will strengthen us to continue to do what we've been doing and to do better. Help us, please, to put thee at the forefront of our lives, and help us to understand the reading tonight. In Jesus' name we say, amen. I, I share with Auntie Paula, I think it's it's wonderful. It It is wonderful. I've heard a pastor say it, I've shared it before, that when you have won a child, when the Holy Spirit has won a child to Christ, mm -hmm. it's not half a life, but it's one life. That's one entire life being given to Christ. When somebody comes to God as an adult or a person, that's where you count half. You know, because we used to, when I used to go to crusade, I don't think they do it anymore. They used to count the adults, one, two, three, when they saw a child, they say, two and a half, you know, and maybe quarter or stuff like that. But when a child comes to Christ, it's one. And, and for me, I work at a primary school. And what I do is when, before I start my sessions, I pray. You know, I try, mm -hmm. I pray. I don't pray all the time. I try to pray with, with the students to make it sharper that, they will hear the words. And I love to, like Auntie Paula, love to jump at the opportunity. I didn't like it at first, but then I saw it as an avenue. I love to jump at the opportunity of doing devotion. Yes, and then doing the stories and sharing to the children. I give you an example, because the Bible stories, as simple as they are, many of them don't go to church and they don't know it. We were, I gave them a question. I gave them a question. I said to them, Noah sent out two birds from the ark. Noah sent two birds from the ark. Name the two. What kind of birds were they? And there was a young lady. So she named Tanisha. Tanisha, you got to church. Tanisha, you got to church. I want it because I, I, I partnered in, in, in teams. I'm a pretty sure girl. You got to church. What a bird they mean. And I said, she go like this. She went like this. And then she said, Peter and Paul. I, I honestly couldn't contain myself. You're not supposed to, but I <laughs> turned my back. You know what I realized this girl say? She was saying on her finger. Fly away, Peter. Fly away, Paul. I was, so I realized that the simple Bible stories, many of them do not know. So whenever, like, even in clubs, we have clubs at school, I jump at doing devotion. And, and I find that it's intriguing to them. It might be boring to us because we know them, you know, the repetition, but it's intriguing to them, the students, to tell them the Bible story. So, so that's what I do. And then in my line of work, I try to encourage them also with, with you know, godly words. And tell them that God didn't make you for this. God didn't create you for this. He didn't put you here for this. And, and he tried to link them with that. And then, especially some of the challenging ones. We have more than girls at school. I tell them purposely, I am praying for you. You know your life may change because God didn't make you for this. I to change and I'm going to pray that God will change you. And, and, and these are the ways. 
maybe for me it's easy and it's comfortable to share to share God because they don't know they don't know I would invite them to church but one purpose to come out and say, Miss me to church. And the truth is, their families don't take them, family members don't take them to church. They've never been to church. The wonderful thing is, Auntie Angie was doing Grand Sabbath school. So it was like a link. I was in the school, and then on Saturdays, no, she was there with, the, with some of my students, not all of them, because when she goes there, many of them, some of them would come. So it, it, it was a link. It was a link for, for them. So when they see her at church and, and, and then, you know, even if I say, you know, I go to so-and-so church, which church? And if I know that they live in that area, it's easy for me to say, you know, you know, Auntie Angie or the lady will come around there. You know, you can link it with them. So, so it's very nice. And, and we are put here. We are put here for a purpose. Many of us will not go to the Adventist school, and that is true. Many, many, many of our students will not go there. But they'll go into the secular school. But when you go to the secular school, do you make a difference like Daniel? Do you make a difference like Joseph when he was in Egypt and Daniel when he was in Babylon? And that is what we ought to do as teachers. Many of us will not be employed in the mm -hmm. Adventist school. But what kind of difference are we making? What is our life saying? Are we being like the other teachers calling the children names? Are we putting them down? You know, do, do, will they question our Christianity if and when they hear that we're Christians or when they go to church and, and see us? Because some of them come to my church. I'm like, surprise, the Morgans, they got, they got baptized, the entire family. One of my students was in it. And, and I was very happy, you know. Well, the students for me, I'm the nice teacher at school. So they don't, they don't question my personality it's because I'm a guidance counselor. But for them, I'm the nice teacher. I'm the trusted teacher at, at school. But that's how we should be as Christians. Once, as, as the student testify that they can go to Mr. Curtis because it's very approachable. And that's how it should be. Now we're looking at Christian education. The life work, the life work. This one thing I do, success in any line de de demands a defined aim, a definite aim. He who would achieve true success in life must keep steadily in view the aim worthy of his endeavor. Such an aim is set before the youth of today. The heaven appointed mm -hmm. purpose of giving the gospel to the world in this generation is the noblest that can appeal to any human being. It opens a field of effort to everyone whose heart Christ has touched. And yes, this generation is different. As we say, many of them don't go to church. And many of them is when they come into your classroom that they will find out about God. Many of them is when they come in contact with you that they will find out. Auntie Angie works at an international school where praying is not done. So she is a Bible that many will read. You know, she is the introduction to many of these young people. To them, by the time they become adults, going to church is the norm. When I was growing up, every child had to go to church. Every child went to church. Even if the parents didn't go, they sent the child to church. But as the other generation comes, not going to church will become the norm. And God's purpose is for us to do it to go and to make a difference wherever we are. God's purpose for the children growing up beside our hearts is wider, deeper, higher than, than our restricted vision as comprehended. So many of us, even if we don't have children of our own, once you're a teacher, we are responsible for all of those, the 10, the 12, the 25, well, it's COVID times, so it's been cut down now. So one time it was 25, 35, let it not be that you've come in contact with a student and, be, and they've never heard of God from you or never seen God. Because when they hear it, children are looking for the example. So they need to hear it and they need to see it. So our purpose, why God put us in the place that we are at, we are, we are there for such a time as this, it is wider it is deeper and it is higher than our visions and we can comprehend. 
from the noblest lot, those whom he has seen faithful, having times past been called to witness for him in the world's highest places. And many a lot of today, growing up as the Dan in his Judean home, studying God's word and his works, and learning the lessons of faithful service, will yet stand in legislative assemblies, in halls of justice, or in royal courts as a witness for the king of kings. So many of our students, we don't know where they will end up. Many of them may end up in parliament. Many of them, many of them may end up in jail, and that's reality. But it's what they have heard from us about God will come back to them to either change their life, change somebody in prison, or change the world because of where they end up as a leader or as a person. Like the thief on the cross, Sister White said that he met Jesus in the sense of he saw Jesus. He was in the crowd when Jesus did the healing and did everything. But he walked away to his normal life. And see, he met him again in death. And so he was able to say, remember me. Let it be that when our students grow up, many of them may not, they may not go to church. You know, as teenagers, they may choose to go the other way. Many of them, when they become focused, when they start working, we don't know where God would put them, where God will put them. Let it be because of the impact we have made. They become like a Daniel. They become like a Joseph. Something we have said would have caused them to be determined to live a life for God because of the life that they saw their teacher live. They may be in courts of kings, but let it be something that was said by you that will cause their life to change even those who are in the king's courts. The Holy Spirit works. We are just his agents. Multitude will be called to a wider ministry. The whole world is opening to the gospel. Ethiopia is stretching out their hands unto God from Japan and China and India, from the still dark lands of our own continent, from every quarter of this world of ours mm -hmm. comes a cry of sin sick hearts for knowledge of God, the God of love. And, and, and that's what the children want. And, and many of them, that's, they'll see through us, the God of love. When the other teachers might curse them and run them and call them names, they realize, oh, Mr. Graham not do that. Sir not do that. Or Auntie Paula not do that. You know, and then look and, and they'll see the difference. And, and, and then maybe some of them will ask, you know, Miss, why are you so different? Why are you not? do so and so on. And then you'll tell them, well, like for me, some of the children will say, Miss, beat him, beat him, beat him, Miss, lick him. And then I say, you are not an animal because that's what they're used to. You are not an animal. I can speak to you and you understand because we speak the same language. God never created to be like this. So you link it and you let them know that they are here for a purpose because many of them, in the community, they believe that they are not here for any reason. They don't serve a purpose. Dying at 17, dying at 20. I don't know that. Because many of them here so they get gun salute and then get this. And to, to them, that's it. But it's for us to show them what the real life is. God didn't make you to die at 17. He didn't create you for you to die at 20. And while you're telling it to them, you're living it. I remember this young man, well, I could, he was challenging. He was challenging and, and he came to school because we deal with children welfare. So they don't have lunch, they come to us. And he come to us time and time again. And one day we, he did something wrong and I spoke to him and he did not have any lunch. And then the little boy said, they're not coming to me because what he expected me to do was to malice him. And someone came to me, another teacher, somebody came to me and said that he didn't have lunch. So I went up there and said, you don't have any lunch. So why didn't you come to me? And hold on him here. He said, because of what you did, don't you think I wasn't going to talk to you? I'm going, because sometimes they punish them by not giving them food. You think that's what I'm going to do, don't? 
And like him say, yes. He say, hey, if you want the food, you come for food. You need to eat. You do something wrong. I'm not going to manage you. I'm not going to not talk to you. You're a child. I'm an adult. I talk to you. That is it. Boy. It was relieving. It's like something lift off his face when he heard that. Because, not because it did something wrong. I already corrected you. Come. And, and, and that is what many of them want to see. The forgiveness that Jesus would do for them. Even if you don't want to do it, you tell them. You know, so it's only because I'm God going to do this because God would do it. And this is what God wants to do, wants me to do. So you tell them. Because the life that they grew up seeing have become a normal life for them, which is mommy punish you by maybe sending you outside and don't give you no food for eat today, tomorrow, or whenever you might have to go beg somebody some food. So they don't know God. And even if they, they, they hear the link of God being a father, you know what they're thinking? But him absent, him not care for me, him no business, him not in my life, because the norm for them is to always see a mother, not a father. A father is absent. And it's for us to demonstrate, especially our male teachers, to demonstrate to our boys that God is a loving man. Because our boys are being brought up to think that they must be tough, you know? You know, man, 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 be tough. Man, express, they live like dogs. And like when a dog see a dog, a male dog see a male dog, you must be, and go on the defense and ready for fights. But as a male teacher, you show them that, you know, that's not how God created the world. That's not how it is. So we are placed in this world. And as the world widens, as our, well, like now, we have expanded because right now we're talking here. We could be talking to persons from Canada, persons to, from Japan, persons from England. Everything, it's like everything now level. It's now level. We are all level. So it is the same thing with our students. Who to tell? Might be somebody in US start to come to our school. Might, 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 might be my school. Nothing is impossible. From US, you know, online school at my school. So we are going far and wide. And we are telling them, one of Auntie Angie's students, when they go back to maybe their home, like as an international school, the word that she has left with them, the text that she has shared for them to learn by memory, they go back and they share it with somebody else. Trust me, it's going far and wide. When we get to heaven, you'll see that that sea that we saw created a ripple effect and created a forest. So teachers, we've been given a great task. Millions upon millions have never heard of God or have never heard of his love and never seen his love revealing Christ, but they will see it through us. It is their right to receive this knowledge to know about God. Like our children have rights, right to be clothed, a right to education. It is our right as Christians and it is the right of those out there to know about God and to know about his love. And it's our responsibility rather to share this knowledge of God's love with them. We have an equal claim with us in the Savior's mercy and it rests with us who have received the knowledge with our children to whom we may impart it. And this is answering their cry. You know, everybody always say people have a void inside and they might use drinking, they might use partying to fill that void, not knowing that that was created. That space is for God to come and fill it. And when that space is filled, your entire life is changed. So people go about looking for it and it's for us now to let them know who Christ is and fill that space for them. Some of them will not choose as children. They may not choose as, as teenagers. But as I tell parents, many of what you're teaching your children, you will see it come to fruition. They are adults. Don't give up now and, and say you can't bother you're going to stop teaching. Don't do that. They, it, you will see it. If you don't put it there, as adults, what are they going to draw on? But as children, when they make their mistakes and you teach them the right, when they become adults, you will see it manifesting. So if you don't teach a child not to steal, when he grow up, he will forever be stealing. He may become a thief then. But as when he steals when he's young or he stole when he was young and you teach him and you punish him, then he'll know that 
he might do it a second or a third time and you continue punishing. But as an adult, he'll know that no, this don't bring forth good consequence. I'm not going to choose that way of life. To every household and every school, to every parent, teacher, and child upon whom has shone the light of the gospel comes at this crisis the question to Esther, the queen at the monumentous crisis in Israel's history. Who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Esther 430, who knows that I am gone to Norman Gardens for such a time as this? I know it's God put me over there. Number one, when it was advertised, it was advertised for a male guidance counselor. I didn't want to apply. Somebody encouraged me to apply and I did. Wasn't even looking to be called. When I saw, when I went on the interview and, and I saw the call, I said, I'm not answer that. Come here, tell me, say, sorry, you did not make it. But God is so good. The call was not that, because I didn't answer. And then they called me back a second. All right, let me just listen to it. And they said that I was awarded the position. God is so awesome. Two of us went there and they wanted a guy, two guidance counselors, a male and a female, but they only advertise for a male. And I know I'm there for such a time as this. You are wherever you are for such a time as this. So when we do it each morning, let us ask God for the wisdom, though we're online, for the wisdom and, and help to touch a life. Those who think of the result of hastening or hindering the gospel, think of it in relation to themselves and to the world. Few think of its relation to God. Few give thought to the suffering that sin has caused our creator. All heaven suffered in Christ's agony, but the suffering did not begin or end with his manifestation. In humanity, the cross is a revelation of our dull senses of the pain that, from its very inception, sin has brought to the heart of God. Every departure from the right, every deed of cruelty, every failure of humanity to reach his ideal brings grief to God. When there came upon Israel the calamities that were the sure result of separation from God, subjugation by their enemies, cruelty and death, it is said that his soul was grieved for the misery of Israel. In all their affliction, he was afflicted and he bare them and carried them all the days of old. Teachers, parents, and students too, you are placed in a secular institution. Mm -hmm. Not to do your work. It's not your work, but it's God's work. So you may think that you're hindering or it's, it's your business. I don't feel like witnessing. I don't feel like telling. I don't. You are put there for a purpose and to fulfill God's purpose. And if you don't do it, you are causing him grief and pain. You're causing a soul to be lost. And it's not your problem that you're causing God grief and pain. Remember his spirit, make it intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered as a whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together. The heart of the infinite father is pained in sympathy. What are we doing to him? We are cause for him. Our world is a vast lesser house, meaning a house filled with sick people with disease, a scene of misery that we dare not allow even our thoughts to dwell upon. Did we realize it as it is? The burden would be too terrible. Yet God feels it all. We're not seeing it as it is, you know. We're not seeing it, but God is seeing it. We are only seeing people going about, not going to church. But God is seeing sin sick people. Mm -hmm. He's seeing people who are suffering. Teachers, we have been teachers, parents, students who are Christians in secular schools, we have been commissioned, going into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He says commands, command to his followers. Not, not that all are called to be ministers or missionaries in the ordinary sense of the term, but all may be workers with him in giving the glad tidings, their fellow men, their fellow classmates, your co-workers, your, 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 your students, mm -hmm. to all, Great or small, 
learned or ignorant, all are young. The command is given. Let us go. Amen. 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 Let us see to, to the calling as we have heard, and wherever we God has placed us, let us shine. At this time, we will go to our closing hymn, 536. God who stretch. The spangled heavens, five, three, six. God who stretch the spangled heavens. We go after two. One, two. God who stretch the spangled heaven in finite in time and place, round the sun in burning radiance. Through the silent fields of space, we are children in your likeness, sharing plenty for with you. Great creator, still creating, show us what we yet may do. We have ventured well undreamed of since the childhood of our race. Nonetheless, the sea of winging through untraveled realms of space, probe the secrets of the anthem, feeling unimagined for facing us with life's destruction or our most triumphant or as each far horizon beckon, may it challenge us anew. Children of creative power, serving others on renew. May our dreams prove rich with promise, each endeavor will be gone. Great Creator, give us guidance till our goals and yours are one. Amen. Okay, let us pray. Kind, loving, sweet, compassionate Father, we praise and we glorify your name. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for all the testimonies. And we thank you, Lord, for your word, which reminds us, Lord, that we are to go. And wherever, Lord, you send us, we need to shine and we need to spread your words. And we need to grow up and mold, Lord, our children in your likeness. So they, when they grow up, or even in their stage that they're in, they, sweet Heavenly Father, will know you and come to give their hearts to thee. And by extension, Lord, share this with their family, and also their family will come to thee. Help us, mighty God, that as we listen, we will heal and sweet heavenly father do what is required of us help us to be obedient help us lord to not think of the negative of what is happening no but help us to have faith in thee and be strengthened knowing that as we go heavenly father you will go with us i pray and ask that you will bless each head bowed here and may we Take this lesson and we'll apply it to our lives. I pray that you will be with the presenter. And as she continue to teach, sweet Heavenly Father, others of your goodness and your love, may Lord she shine for thee. May you save her and your and her family in your kingdom. And by extension, sweet Heavenly Father, us all. Bless us. Have thine own sweet way in our lives. And may you continue to be with us throughout the week. And may we tell someone about you. And as we tell someone, may their lives be changed. And Lord, your name be glorified. 
and your kingdom increase. Mm -hmm. Bless us now, Mary. Thanks so very much again for this evening. This is my asking with thanksgiving and the forgiveness of our sins. In Jesus' precious name, mm -hmm. amen. Thank you. We'll now have 30 seconds of meditation. We meditate on what we have just heard and how we are going to allow it to change our lives. Amen. Oh, 